Ghislaine Maxwell Speaks. Law and Crime Managing Editor Adam Klasfeld comes on to break down the shocking statements from the convicted sex trafficker in her new interview. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law and Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. Epstein died and, and they should uh, take, their, the, and take their disappointment and upset out on the authorities that allowed that to happen. Ghislaine Maxwell is speaking out. That's right. The convicted child sex trafficker and former Jeffrey Epstein associate is sitting in federal prison serving out her 20-year sentence, and she now has some things to say. You see, she sat down for an interview with UK broadcaster Talk TV, and she made some pretty stunning claims. So to help me talk a little bit more about this, I want to bring in somebody who has followed the Ghislaine Maxwell case very closely, actually was in court during her trial. I'm joined right now by managing editor of Law and Crime and host of the Objections podcast, Adam Klasfeld. Adam, good to have you on. Good to be on. Adam, you know where I'm going to start. I'm going to start with the bombshell from Miss Maxwell because she was asked about Jeffrey Epstein's death. Now, you'll recall that Epstein was found dead in his jail cell while awaiting trial on sexual abuse charges. And while the death was ruled a suicide, Maxwell doesn't quite believe that. No, he didn't. I don't believe he did. I believe that he was uh, murdered. Well, I was shocked. And I wondered how it had happened. Because um, as far as I was concerned, he was going to... I was sure he was going to appeal. Adam, what do you make of that? Well, a couple of things go through my mind when I listen to that clip. First and foremost, uh, Ghislaine Maxwell's father, Robert Maxwell, what you may remember, had been uh, found dead after falling from his yacht in what was ruled an accident. She didn't believe that then either. She thought her father was killed. So this is a, there's a little bit of biographical background here even that. But uh, going further, she isn't alone in the kind of prominent people who are connected to the case who have expressed skepticism on this subject. That includes Jeffrey Epstein's legal team. That includes his family, uh, forensic pathologists. And I'll go uh, farther and say that uh, one of the top chroniclers of the entire Epstein saga, a woman who's very almost uh, single-handedly responsible for reigniting interest in the case and has been credited for the prosecution. Julie K. Brown recently wrote a book uh, uh, about the Jeffrey Epstein saga. One of the chapters was titled Jeffrey Epstein Didn't Kill Himself, a very popular meme. Uh, so Ghislaine Maxwell isn't alone in thinking that. As you noted, Jesse, his death has been ruled a suicide. A number of prominent people connected to the case or not connected to the case have uh, expressed willingness to believe that. But that said, taking a step back here, let's get the big picture. Elaine Maxwell is now convicted of very serious charges, including sex trafficking. She's pushing an appeal. Uh, one of the key focuses of her appeal will be to sow distrust about the system. So of course, when you might, if you listen to the full clip, she's going to say, uh, she said that the victims should be upset with the prison officials who let that happen. So this is a kind of theme that we're hearing here about uh, Ghislaine Maxwell sowing distrust on the legal system. She's made it about the press. She's made it about the failures of the prison system throughout. And we're seeing more of the same. And and also things that are familiar themes, uh, even before any of this happened throughout her life. And real quick, is this a surprise to you? She said this in the sense that was she concerned about her safety in federal lockup? Was she concerned about her safety while awaiting trial? Remember, she was not granted bond. So, I mean, the question, of course, was if she believed Jeffrey Epstein was killed, um, is this a surprise to you or did we hear rumblings that she believed this and was worried about her own safety? Well, we know that she was worried about her own safety throughout. She made multiple appeals for bond, was rejected multiple times. One of the filings, court filings that she gave in attempting to get out of prison uh, pending trial 
included as an exhibit a photograph of her with a black eye. We still don't know where the alleged Shiner came from. We just saw a little discoloration under her eye. Uh, so this has been a common theme with her. She complains about the uh, legal system, the media, the uh, the Bureau of Prisons. So this is very this is very common. It has followed a theme that even though it's a stunner of an interview, absolutely, uh, it is very much in keeping with what we've heard from Maxwell for years. Let's continue on with this stunner, stunner of an interview because I want to get your take on this too. When she was asked about that infamous photograph, the photograph of Prince Andrew with Virginia Jufre, the woman who has accused the prince of sexually abusing her when she was a teenager, listen to what she had to say about it. With the fake. I don't believe that. I don't believe it's real for a second. In fact, I'm sure it's not. Well, there's never been an original. And further, there's no photograph. And I've only ever seen a photocopy of it. Wow. So she says that that photograph that we've all seen is a fake, that it was doctored, there's never been an original copy. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I'm glad you asked me about that one, Jesse, because it's very interesting, because in 2015, there was a different quote about that photograph by one Ghislaine Maxwell in a leaked email that made its way to the UK press that said that she was saying that it looked real. Well, something happened between 2015 and the previous weekend about that uh, photograph. Now, either she got more skeptical recently, or she thinks that there's some good reason to cast doubt on the credibility of Virginia Jufre, wants to help out her friend, Prince Andrew, uh, and undermine the case against him right after a real setback for Virginia Jufre. Just to take a step back here, that photograph, of course, was a photograph of Jufre and the prince with her in the background, smiling. And uh, very recently, Virginia Jufre had her case fall apart against Alan Dershowitz. Now, if the same thing happened uh, with Prince Andrew, and there's been some rumblings in the British press that uh, he, he may reconsider the settlement, we'll see to whatever extent he's able to wriggle out of that settlement. If two cases fell apart by one of her top accusers, uh, come in appeal time, that would be good for her. Yeah, and, and just to follow up on that, right, so he settled the sexual loss, assault lawsuit. He hasn't been criminally charged, the prince, with anything. I, I was curious when she made this statement that if she were called to be a witness against him in any future prosecution, she would say, well, I've never even known Virginia Jufre to be with the prince, and I'll stop, you know, I'll one further, I think that photo was doctored, so she might be laying the seeds out there, or maybe she really does believe the the actual uh, photo was doctored. I have to ask you the main question of this. Why is she doing this interview? Well, it seems right now, I mean, there's one person who knows the answer to that question, and that is Ghislaine Maxwell. But I will say this, this is happening very shortly after, again, I point to the uh, crumbling of the case that Virginia Jufre filed against Alan Dershowitz. Uh, it was seen by some folks as a blow to a credibility of not only one of the top Epstein accusers, but one of the top accusers against uh, Ghislaine Maxwell. So it could be seizing upon that timing. The fact that the Prince's uh, settlement agreement had a one-year expiration date reportedly on the gag order, so that might be coming out soon. Uh, she might figure that if she tries to raise some doubt about one of the most visible accusers in this saga, she could maybe enhance her position pending an appeal at a time when a lot of this is coming to a head. So uh, there are many ways that her uh, coming out to finally speak to the press in these jailhouse interviews are, uh, you know, the, the timing is very interesting. And uh, it's also interesting, I'll just point to that one thing one more time, about the fact that she's claiming that this photo looked fake. In 2015, she said it looks real. And that's a direct quote. 
Do you think she seemed remorseful at all in this interview about the, the victims in this case? Because that became a talking point as well. If you think that she's doing this strategically for this interview, what did you think of her comments regarding the victims in the case? You know, she's walking this line that she always has walked with the victims, where she expresses empathy with them, but not for anything that she did. She has never really kind of stepped forward and apologize them for her actions. And we'll see if that how that is playing out for an appeal, because she is very much trying to litigate our understanding of this case, the findings, what the jury found. Uh, she's trying to revive a lot of this history. Uh, and there, this history now has a long record uh, that including her own comments, which she's now backtracking from. Unbelievable. Right, let me ask you this before I let you go real quick. You think she's going to do another interview? I, you know, being the media savvy, uh, former socialite that she is, I wouldn't be surprised if this wasn't the last. Is she going to do an interview with Adam Klasfeld? Well, not, uh, my line is always open and I'll reach <laughs> out to her folks. And we will have you right back on to talk about that. <laughs> Adam, thanks so much. It's great seeing you. Great seeing you too. And that's all we have for you here on Sidebar, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. I'll speak to you next time.